Hey guys, and welcome back to more World Guns Gun Disassembly. Today we're going to be doing the Mosin Nagant. Um, it is a World War II um, rifle used by the Soviet armies or the USSR. Um, so it's a very popular weapon. It has very high accuracy, big as the bolt drift. It's a uh, um, bolt action rifle. So, not too much really I'll say about it. It's a magazine fed bolt action rifle. Like, we're gonna get into a lot of the history of it, but you could also just read the history on the Wikipedia if you're really interested. So, this weapon, we'll just kinda do the assembly here and won't worry about much else. But again, there is kind of an interesting history, so if you wanted to read on Wikipedia, you could. Um, the only reason I'm not is it's just been me spurting out facts. I couldn't really find too many facts that were really that interesting about this weapon so I'll put in the cleaning rod first I guess and then the connector so we'll hop into the full disassembly then okay so we want to move the connector then move the bolt body Move the cocking knob, frag pin, bolt head, extractor. Okay, and that's um, that fully disassembled. Let's start from the back and work our way to the front, shall we? So move the butt plate, and the rear right swing swivel extension. Rear left swing stifle extension. Receiver tank screw. Magazine tank screw. And then you can pull up the magazine body. Uh, you can pull up the magazine assembly there. Okay, yeah, it does pull up the little piece. Perfect. Uh, floor plate latch assembly. Pull out the cleaning rod. Okay. Pull out the front left swivel extension. Front right swivel extension. Nose cap assembly. Front sight. Front barrel band. Front barrel band side. Rear barrel band. And then you can move the ha entire handguard. Oh really, usually you move these little pieces off. But anyway, keep moving back, real barrel band. Entire receiver comes off. Recoil stock bolt. Cleaning rod retaining nut. Pull out the trigger assembly. Interrupter. Ejector. This is a pin there and a pin here. Remove the entire barrel. Rear sight base. Then you want to pull off the rear sight leaf. Rear sight body. Take out the left button. And the right button. And then you can take out the sp the, sp the springer's little leaf. I like it back, I didn't quite see. That was a spring or a leaf. Let's look at it. Yeah. Oh, it's a leaf spring. Well, I was right in both cases then. Recite assembly. Put back on the recite base. Pull it back in the entire barrel. Um, what was the first thing we put back in these pins? Trigger assembly, ejector, interrupter. Oh yeah, I'll put the stock recoil bolt, the clean rod retaining nut. Then we can put the receiver back in here. Right swivel extension, left swivel extension. 
then Hangar goes back on. Nose cap assembly. No? Oh, you gotta put dads on first, I guess. No? What am I missing? Oh, aw, oh, you click. It highlights it if you click this front bad, but it doesn't actually include it. That's weird. Front sight. Then the rod can go back in. Fire and pin can go back in there. Oops. I meant to click the extractor. Put back on the bolt head. Cock and knob. And you can put the bolt body back in there. Floor plate latch assembly. Magazine assembly. Okay, put the magazine body back on. Magazine tang and receiver tang. Rear left sewer extension. Rear right sewer extension. Butt plate. And then last piece is the connector. Your last piece always has to be the connector, it seems. Which is fine. So here's your assembly, reassembly, let's hop into operation. So operation is very similar to the Lee Enfield, but but the clip feeding is a little bit different. We'll, we'll show you here. So the magazine, as you saw, is actually built in. So you can still use a stripper clip, but you can't actually um, pull out the, the clip to load the gun. The clip stays in the gun no matter what. So I guess in the operation it doesn't show you taking out the gun. It just shows you put a stripper clip in for the top, which you can do. But in the Lee Enfield you can actually remove the magazine, which you cannot do here. The magazine is built into the gun. Like I guess you could field strip it and take out the magazine, but you wouldn't want to put a loaded magazine back in. So there'd be no real point. But anyway, so we'll do a couple shots through the x-ray modes. I guess you pretty much only need to see this anyway, so no point in zoom, not zooming in on it. This is where the action is not in the barrel, so. Reload. and see the bolts are loaded there, so we'll hop into slow motion here. Oops, sorry. Yeah, we definitely want to just do so. Trigger is pulled. So where's the ha oh? So where's it actually released? If I had to hop into another one more X-ray, let me see. Oh yeah, now you can see it good. Trigger is pulled, which lowers the hammer, which lets or not lower the hammer, but um, lowers here, releases the firing pin and strikes so that now when you pull this back this is what cocks the rifle and it catches here it's cocked and you just release it it fires so pretty basic but well made rifle Oops, I was just gonna chop, chop in the two here. Oops, hate when it loads at slower speed. So. Hard. I like how you have to see in slow motion the gun cocking. But oh well. Not the end of the world. So there is a couple things you can throw on this bad boy though. A lot of them had scopes, a lot of them were used as sniper rifles. Because of their great accuracy, they made great sniper rifles. So there is. Um, not very sniper rifle like, but you could put a bayonet. The bayonet actually attaches at the side, which... I guess they all attach to the side, some of them attach at the bottom, but... Soviets had a really nice bayonet, it wasn't really a knife, it was a full long bayonet, which made it really nice. But the reason it was though they used it 
in the war. So I think you can actually see this quite well. Let's slow down. I hit the rear sight. Does that just show pushing in the buttons? It's a little bit slow. We'd probably do 10 better. Even just two would probably be fine. But to push in, you push in the buttons and you slide it down. Which you can see there. However, you could probably have guessed that happened, so the slow motion is probably not that interesting, but... Also, I love these guys where you can raise the sight while the scope's on. Like, it would, like, I guess it's fine, but it's like, you may as well stop it, because you don't want to raise the sight when your scope is off. I guess you might be able to kind of look below this... the scope. The fire just using iron sights, but... I don't really would see what really would be the point, but I guess you could, always. And then, safety is on this side. No. Oh yeah, it's one of those mechanical safeties. So you just pull it across, and this is it's in safety mode there. It's like the firing pin here. I, if you X-ray, you can even see it better. So but it's not in safety. The firing pin can actually fire here. Here. You're making it so it mechanically can't fire, you can't release the firing pin. So that's how that works. Oh, and I guess they want us to unload around. So we have to go on safety, and to load around, it's the same, you just pull her back. So guys, thanks for coming out for the Mosin Nagant, and we'll be back in the next episode for more disassemblies. Thank you guys, later.